Safety's off this time. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. There we go. Wow. Today we have some interesting slugs sent to us by a viewer named Psycho Clown. He casts these himself using an AS mold. He used range scrap lead for these, then powder coat them that beautiful orange color. Now these are some wicked slugs designed to fragment upon impact. With over one and a quarter ounces of lead going around 1600 feet per second, they'll definitely do that. A, a ballistic sand bag, FBI certified sand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready when you are. All right. Smooth bore, Bacall. Are you ready? I'm ready. It's got my kick a little bit, Danny. I got my pee pad on. Okay, good. All I'm right. ready. Hit it. There we go. Yeah, I did not see a chrono reading. Pretty good thump. Now the first test shot was a little bit low. He was using the Bacall, which has a thin barrel. Kind of acts like rubber using these very heavy, powerful loads. The barrel flexes a lot. We call that barrel harmonics. So in other words, heavy projectiles like this tend to shoot a little bit low. We see a lot of energy transfer. The seams of the little bag are torn apart. None of the uh, projectile went through the bag. Sand's a pretty darn good way of stopping projectiles like this. Okay, there is the wad it was attached to with the screw. The rest of it just disintegrated. What's the bag look like? Yeah, it hit a little bit low. I haven't fired that by call. You were aiming at the little months. I was trying for the little hot pepper thing. Little chili pepper thingy. Yeah. Hit a little low. The when first did, first first time we ever tested these, so windage good was enough. good. Windage was real good. Gluten free. <laughs> no lard. No lard. Wow, well, lard makes things good. Texas Tamale Company. Those are they're pretty good. Um, they're very small though. They're like the size of a big finger. If that makes any sense. No, I thought it'd be interesting to see how things react to sand like that. Did not go through or anything, right? No, it didn't go through. There's no exit wound. Okay, uh, lead plate. We're about 12 yards, maybe? Uh, right at that, yeah. Okay. And he's aiming at the little red dot. Are you going to adjust for drop or anything like that? Well, I don't know. Uh, that might have been me on that first one. Well, it's a, a heavyish slug, and you know how barrel harmonics are. So, uh, that was low. <laughs> All right, we'll see okay. what we can do. Okay, I'm ready. There we go. Test number two, again, using the Bacall with that thin, flexible barrel. Not really designed to shoot slugs out of, by the way. It is a cylinder bore, but mostly designed to shoot, you know, birdshot out of. One thing we really need to do to show this barrel harmonics is to actually show the barrel flexing with the high-speed camera. Okay, again, it was about a good three inches low. So that's consistent. Yeah. I was holding my point of aim again on the... Okay. On the now red, you're going to have to... You, you know it, where they're going now, so you're going to compensate for that. Put some of that Kentucky elevation on it. That's right. And... You know, pretty, we found, found the wad. It bounced back a little bit. Yeah, it was like a couple feet in front of the target. Most of the uh, slug is in the hole. <laughs> it's still oh, powder coated. Go. Yeah, that'll add to the weight. Yeah. Nice big divot. Yeah, not bad at all. It's about uh, about an inch deep. Wow. Let's see what the back looks like. Ooh. Ooh, chunk. Knock the chunk loose. That's what I saw bounce down range. Okay. Real famous wet magazines. Everyone should be using these as a target. Smooth bore again. Uh, actually, this was the Maverick 88. Okay, same thing. <laughs> Different trigger group. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. It. Aiming at the top sector. I'm ready. Okay. Well, during these tests, it's rare that we don't have at least one failure. Here we see the 
the slug actually separated from the wad, hit sideways, and because it didn't fragment, it stayed in one piece and just blew right through the magazines. Okay, rifled barrel. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Now remember, these are a Russian design, and they don't really use rifled barrels in Russia. They might use a rifled choke, that's about it. But we had uh, at least no separation of the wad on this one, and the slug acted like it was supposed to, fragmenting inside the wet magazines. Which one was the first one? Uh, bottom would be the first one. Uh, Can we tell what happened there? <laughs> Well, the first one went all the way through. Oh, okay. We uh, blew a pretty good hole out, and it blew target material about, I don't know, almost 20 feet down range. Second one, here. It was a little low. A little bit low, but found the slug on the ground that blew our magazines apart and this was did not make it through huh interesting same rifle versus smooth right board. here is probably the last one huh it's probably that the teeth are in there somewhere you want to Search you there and see if you can find any of the yes. what the damage looks like as it progresses through. Oh, here we go. Got one. Now here's where it uh, the bulk of it went through. See one here, one here. There it is. Oh, pretty and substantial pieces of uh, we lead. We have another one. Still orange, makes it easier to find. Huh? Right here. Okay. So it blew up inside there. I don't. I wish Paul Harrell would do a wet magazine target. Yeah, he it's, likes that wet meat. Yeah, it's there's too many variables there though. These are it's it could be a really good standard for them. Look at you that. See that. Yeah, yeah. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. That was the second shot to the rifled barrel. Okay, F-111 panel. This is going to be a Patreon giveaway. We're all going to sign it. Put one more hole in it just for good measure. <laughs> uh, I'm ready when you are. You're aiming right. at the little red cross, right? Little red, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm ready. In this test, again, we used full rifling, but we had separation this time. Now, it's entirely possible we were just pushing these way too fast, or the plastic wad was just a little too thin where the screw engaged it. Okay, you going for the greenish one on the right? Full rifling, right? Uh, this is full rifle, yes. Got it. Once again, the wad separated, but despite that, it was incredibly accurate. Look at that shot. Now I remind you that the wad separation was not limited to the rifle barrel. We did see the same thing happen out of a smoothbore. Okay, smoothbore, bead sight. A little more of a challenge. Close enough. You clipped it. Out of a smooth bore. Fortunately, the wad did not separate. Accuracy was pretty darn good. About as accurate as you can get just using a bead sight, which pretty much covers up the entire target at 50 yards, by the way. So once again, Danny makes us proud with that beautiful shot. Ballistic booger. Everyone loves the ballistic booger. Yes, the ballistic booger is kind of nasty, but it really shows the fragmentation. And in this case, it just fragmented like a hand grenade. 
In this test shot, uh, Danny was using a barrel with a vented rib on it. A lot of people never mention this, but a vented rib actually stiffens your barrel a little bit, helps reduce that barrel harmonics or barrel whip. I don't know if you're shooting at the top one or the bottom one. I figured the bottom one then. Okay. See how high we can launch that top one. Wow! Again, Danny was using the barrel with the vented rib on it. I might be wrong here, but I believe it's a 24 inch barrel and it has no choke on it. It's just a cylinder bore. The point of impact is much closer to the point of aim using this barrel. Anytime you're ready. All right, to then. Just another random target I had in my truck, <laughs> but I wanted to really be uh, honest and show the accuracy of these things when using the right equipment. And I'm pretty certain if you really dial these things in, do your homework and testing, you can get these things performing much better than even as you can see here. Wow. Went to the right. Now this has got to be one of the most brutal ballistic gel shots from a 12 gauge load I've ever seen. Now I've slowed it down quite a bit here so you could really see what's going on. Look at those fragments just filling that entire block with wound cavities and some of them went all the way through the block. Did not expect that. I thought they'd go about a quarter of the way into the block and shoot out the sides but nope. Just went right through that thing like butter. Lots of energy to throw it off the table like that. How much does that block weigh? Like 20 pounds or something like that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, very visible uh, fragmentation in there. And one <clears throat> exited out the bottom. One made it straight through. Yeah, I saw a couple. That one made it through. Make it all the way through that thing. This came through the side right here. The main wad and everything went straight through. That one held together, luckily. Then we got one up here on the top. <laughs> almost, almost made it. Almost made it. Let's see, let's flip it around here. That's awesome. Get out of there. Wait a minute. Get out. Get, you know, get no ideas there. 